Hi, I'm Hilary Holsenbach, and welcome to episode 142 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, we visit the Eamon Carter and speak with Dr. Shirley Reese Hughes, assistant curator of paintings and sculpture about their exhibition, American Vanguards, Graham, Davis, Gorky, de Kooning, and their circle, 1927 to 42. Now for Art This Week. Today we're speaking with Dr. Shirley Reese Hughes, Assistant Curator of Paintings and Sculptures here at the Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you first uh, how this exhibition, American Vanguards, of approximately 90 pieces came together. That's a great question. Um, it's uh, organized by the Addison Gallery of American Art, and it was organized by three independent curators, William Agee, Karen Wilkin, and Irving Sandler. And these uh, curators had looked for a long time at the 1930s and kept, through their research, coming across this figure of John Graham, mm -hmm. who really hadn't been explored in any depth. And what they found out was that John Graham played a pivotal role in the formation of American modernism as sort of a leader and a nurturer of younger American artists that were finding their own voices in the early 1920s. So this exhibition, um, if you can tell me then, how does it um, define uh, American modernism? John Graham was seminal in that he kept this group together and kept inspiring them. When we think of American modernism, we often think of before World War I, and we think of Georgia O'Keeffe, Arthur Dove, John Mayer, and the Stieglitz Circle as really these prominent members who were creating their own, forging their own abstract styles. But when we get to the 1930s, often art was looked at more for social realist and American scene painting. But what John Graham did was he kept encouraging these artists, particularly Arshel Gorky, Stuart Davis, and Willem de Kooning, mm -hmm. to pursue their own abstract voices. So these artists were continuing their abstract pursuits. And Stuart Davis was perhaps the most progressive, the more mature artist of the group, and had, by 1928, began to forge his own abstract style mm -hmm. through the Egg Beater series. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the Egg Beater series, mm -hmm. um, Egg Beater number one, mm -hmm. where you can see what Davis had done was taken a rubber glove, an egg beater, an electric fan, and then abstracted it into this beautiful and original interpretation. And Davis and a lot of these artists were, of course, looking at, that were inspired by European uh, modernism, so they were looking at Cubism, and that in part inspired Davis, but it was really him coming to his own abstract style here. Mm -hmm. The artist, de Kooning was the one when he met, when he, as an immigrant coming to America, when he mm -hmm. came, uh, he said he was fortunate to meet the three smartest artists on the scene, which was John Graham, Stuart Davis, and Arshel Gorky. And he referred to them as the Three Musketeers. And so throughout the exhibition, you'll see that in the text, kind of referring to them as the Three Musketeers. And then de Kooning joined the group, becoming the Fourth Musketeer. Mm -hmm. So this wall that we're actually in front of, this is their early, where they came together. This is where they were at as individual artists when they met. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. When they met in the late 20s, Davis, as you can see out of the group, was the furthest along. Arshel Gorky, Willem de Kooning were still working in more representational modes, mm -hmm. but they would soon gravitate more increasingly to abstraction. And it was largely through John Graham, who was at the time traveling to Paris and bringing back European ideas, bringing back the latest in uh, what was happening in Europe. So he was, he was kind of this conduit of knowledge and they were all hungry to hear about what was happening in Paris, which at the time, in the 20s, was the avant-garde center of the art world. But what's interesting is how we see this now when we look back in history, we realize that this continuation of American modernism where artists were forging their own identities that this was part of a legacy leading up to abstract expressionism mm -hmm. and how important Graham was as this seminal figure sort of guiding them and nurturing them mm -hmm. thinking about ideas that would be kind of some of the most important ideas of abstract expressionism like thinking about the materiality of art and mm -hmm. thinking about 
its presence. So these ideas were fomenting at this moment in the 20s and 30s amongst these artists. And as, we, as you progress through the exhibition, you kind of see how they evolve as artists and become more of their own, uh, own individual voices, but also kind of leading into, you can see how it leads into the abstract expressionist movement because the paintings become larger in scale. Some of the ideas, um, the emphasis on physicality, the thought about the, the art itself, the process of making it, those kinds of concepts mm -hmm. they're working on and generating. Now, coming back to the question uh, about how they were different uh, individuals, but they were looking for their, or they were looking for their own voice, mm -hmm. but they, you see the influences, and this is a piece right here where we, we do see a lot of um, influence from Graham and uh, in one of Gorky's pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about it? Yeah, um, this Gorky piece I think beautifully illustrates the ideas that the artists were, cro this cross-fertilization that was happening between um, you have the sense of cubism going on and fracturing the planes, but you also have some biomorphic abstraction going on in the center of the work where Gorky is looking at surrealism, as was John Graham, and other paintings in this room, you can see these kind of biomorphic shapes in John Graham's painting. Mm -hmm. So these ideas that are kind of cross-fertilizing, where the artists are experimenting with motifs and forms, trying to find their own voices, and then the David Smith sculpture behind you, it's almost as if Gorky's work in paint kind of comes to life in three dimensions in a sculpture. But Gorky and de Kooning and and this translates into, as we progress through the exhibition, is they were very close. As immigrant artists, mm -hmm. um, de Kooning really looked up to Gorky, learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. Like you just mentioned, though, about uh, how they, they respected and they kind of uh, were, were brought together by mm -hmm. maybe destiny, uh, but it was definitely by one of the classes that they all took at the uh, American League, Artist League, is that correct? The Art York? Students League, mm -hmm. yeah. John Graham, actually, that's where he met Stuart Davis and Arshel Gorky originally. And he met other really prominent artists like Adolf Gottlieb, who's also featured in the exhibition, mm -hmm. and Alexander Calder, who became a very famous sculptor. Mm -hmm. um, he met them at the Art Students League. And so Graham was sort of always this conduit for mm -hmm. connecting artists. And so at the Art Students League, it was where Graham mm -hmm. really started building his network mm -hmm. of everyone he knew. And then going abroad to Paris, he knew Pablo Picasso. Mm -hmm. And then when Stuart Davis went abroad in 1928, to study in Paris, Graham was able to facilitate a meeting um, between Davis and other prominent artists like uh, uh, Pablo Picasso and others. So Graham was kind of this conduit, always kind of helping artists meet one another and then exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. In terms of subject matter, you know, Davis was the one who always kind of maintained references to the real world and references mm -hmm. to um, subjects and places and themes or objects that people could reference and identify. And Gorky mm -hmm. was less concerned with that. Mm -hmm. um, in this work, this is just more of coming out of his imagination and experimentation and, and thinking about forms and how they relate to one another. And then what's interesting is what translates in David Smith's sculpture, it's entitled Amusement Park. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually referencing an, an actual place that we know of mm -hmm. um, in Smith's work. And, and Graham was kind of a believer in that art was a means of communication and a means of reaching the collective unconscious, which of course became part of the later abstract expressionist movement, which was so important, um, an important idea there. Um, whereas Davis was less concerned with the unconscious. Um, but you can see in Gorky's work and also in de Kooning's, much more abstract, much more kind of looking into their unconscious to find their own subject matter. And uh, earlier you had mentioned about they were considered the three musketeers. Yeah. Do you ever think there was any uh, friendly rivalry? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think there was. I think that, um, you know, artists being that they're very set in their ways and, and sort of argue, but then they would come back together supposedly mm -hmm. and as if nothing had happened and, and be, you know, great friends again. So I think that was also the beauty of their relationship, you know, that they grew from their arguments and their disagreements and, and could ex but still respect one another. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this installation, uh, and this exhibition, I should say, is wonderfully uh, done, and um, oh, definitely everyone should get an opportunity to come out and take a look at it, and I really thank you for the time you took oh. to speak with us today. Thank you. 
We want to thank Dr. Reese Hughes for speaking with us. More information about the exhibition and the museum can be found at cartermuseum.org. The exhibition closes August 19th, so make sure not to miss it. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polo